This video is being recorded with the front facing camera of the iPhone 16 Pro. And in this video, what I want to show you is how you can utilize log format, which is available on any of the 15 Pro models or the 16 Pro models, but for everyday users, because typically videos around this format tend to revolve around the technicalities of shutter speed and etc. All of all of the like technicalities that it takes to make a professional video. But what everyday users, we all we do with our iPhone is we open the camera and we start to record. And we don't think about anything, we just let the iPhone do everything for us. So I wanna show you both a free and paid app way that can really elevate your everyday videos and make them look so much better. Now in the description below, you're gonna find all the different timestamps. So if you wanna jump around, feel free to do so. So the first thing I want to start with is what you're going to require to get started. Now, you don't have to use an external storage option, but I highly recommend it. You can either do what I've done, which is I've MagSaved my own mount to a SSD and I just attach this onto the phone, especially when I know that I'm going to be making a lot more videos like I did with my trip to Morocco. The other option is a SD card reader. This too can also just be plugged up right into your iPhone. And the reason I like this option is that if you are someone that has a traditional camera and then you also have the iPhone and you wanna shoot footage from both, then using one of these is gonna really help because you can take the SD card out and put it into your camera and record video there, but then also use this reader to connect it to your iPhone and have all your footage in one place. Now, none of these things are a requirement by any means because you can simply record to your phone storage. So if you have enough storage available, then that is also an option, but these files tend to be larger, even though I'm gonna show you how to record in a more compressed ProRes format, but still they can take up a lot of space, especially if you're doing lengthier videos. Okay, so now I've switched over to my regular DSLR camera because we are doing a screen recording over here on the iPhone so I could show you how to use the Final Cut Camera app. Download the app. It's a free app by Apple. It basically gives you more control over your camera. It's not as great as the paid one that I'm going to show you, but it will get the job done. And when you open this app, there's a couple things to note here. So, for example, if you have it in landscape like I do, in the top left you have your settings, okay? So here is where you can go in and change a lot of different things. So here where you see codec, what you're going to want to do is if you're wanting to record directly to your phone, you want to make sure you have HEVC selected because like I was saying earlier, this is the compressed format and this is going to allow you to record good footage, but in smaller file sizes. If you have an external storage option and you're doing it directly to an SSD, then I do recommend you select Apple ProRes because what this is gonna do is retain the most quality. But if you're not really worried about that, you can get by with using HEVC, no external storage required. Now, if we go back, the next thing is format. So if we click here, here is where you want to make sure you have 4K selected. So that's going to give you 4K quality. And in frames per second, you can do 30 FPS standard. That's what I like to shoot in. But if you want to do more uh, frames per second and then slow it down later, then you can do 60. And if you have external storage connected, here you'll see the option to do 120 frames per second as well. So see, if we scroll down, you'll see that it says it's not supported. And that's because, well, I don't have an external storage device connected right now. So now let's go back, color and dynamic range. Here, you're gonna wanna make sure log is selected. And below where you see the preview with LUT, what this is gonna do is show you what the log footage will look like in more of a standard conversion. I'm so used to shooting in this way. I like the way that the log format just looks. So I'm kind of used to making the adjustments I need to. 
just by viewing it in log, but if you're just getting started, I would say do the preview with LUT options so that way after you've tweaked a few settings that I'm going to tell you, then you'll be able to see what your footage is going to look like, but then we're going to jump into the Photos app and tweak it a little bit more to really give it some pop. Now, if we go back once again, here you're going to see stabilization. You want to have that on if you want your uh, footage to look uh, stabilized. So here in the Final Cut Camera app, there's a couple other things. So back at the main screen, you're going to see this light bulb and sun icon. And here, if you tap on this, this is basically your white balance. And what white balance is, is that everything from sunlight or light coming in from a window to this lamp that's back here, they all have a color temperature. And what you want to do is understand this so that way your white balance can be correct so your footage looks good like once you actually go to edit it. Because if your white balance is off, then when you go to edit it, which I'm going to show you later, then you're going to realize that it's not going to look good at all. Now sometimes I do manipulate white balance a little bit if there's a specific look I want to get out of a clip, you could do that as well. And if you just do yourself a favor and like read a article on white balance, then that'll really help you out. But we don't need to dive too deep into it. If you hit where you see this cloud, right? So there's a couple of options. This will give you a good guide. So you have daylight, you have shadow, cloudy, tungsten, fluorescent, and the little icons next to them will basically help you understand which one needs to be set. Again, just trying to keep it simple. So today, like I have my white balance set to cloudy because it's cloudy outside. Okay, the next thing of note is going to be this plus and minus icon. So this is your exposure. The iPhone tends to overexpose. Mine wants to make things a little bit brighter than they should be. So what I like to do is that the brighter it is, the more I cut down on my exposure. And a general rule that I follow, so all these different clips that you saw in my any of my reviews where I was in Morocco and I was talking about ProRes, those were things I was shooting with the Final Cut camera app. So I generally, if it's really bright out, the most I'll reduce the exposure by is minus 1.3. And then I kind of work up from there depending on the lighting conditions. So the more the light, the more I reduce this, but don't go past, I wouldn't say you should go past minus 1.5 because then your footage is going to look too dark. But again, I want to keep this as simple as possible. So if you follow this general rule, you should be fine. At nighttime, I don't mess with the exposure at all. I think the iPhone does a good enough job, even with the Final Cut camera app, in keeping the exposure pretty decent. Otherwise, like if you do reduce it at all, then you're going to notice that your shots look really dark and you don't want that. Okay, now the next step is just to press record. So when you press record, it's going to start recording the footage and you know, everything is locked in. That's the cool thing. So if you've ever taken a video with the phone, right, you'll notice that light is always shifting and things are always shifting. It's because your iPhone is constantly trying to balance out white balance and the exposure and then the shutter speed and all of this is going on without you even knowing it, right? The iPhone's automatically doing it. But with this, you basically lock in the settings so you're footage isn't going to look like iPhone footage. On top of that, you're recording in logs, so it's just going to have more dynamic range and allow you to really tweak it. So this clip that we've recorded, we're now going to go and edit this. Now, anytime that you record with the Final Cut Camera app, what it does is, is that it saves it within the app. So in order to save it to your Photos app, where we're going to edit this, you need to actually tap on the clip tap on this little arrow thing and then do save video. And what this is going to do is save it to your photos library. And now we're just going to go into our photos library and click on the clip. Okay. One thing I don't like what Final Cut does is that it inverts your front facing camera footage. So 
this is really annoying about the iPhone. So if you want to first solve that, just go into settings, hit the crop, and we're going to tap on that icon and just invert the footage. So this is what it actually looked like when we initially were playing with it. Now, log is a very flat format, so it's basically lacking all your contrast and saturation. So what we're going to do is we're going to put some of that back. And what I like to simply adjust is the shadows. So I like to reduce the light in the shadows a little bit. Then I like to add some contrast. And then you're going to go over to saturation and you're going to put some saturation back into the image. Now, if you want some warmth, you can do that. So let's say you shot on a sunny day and you want a little bit more of a warm hue to your footage. You can add some warmth to it or reduce it. See, so if it was a cold day and you want to give it a cooler feeling, you can adjust that and Vibrance, on the other hand, is just how vibrant your image is. So if you want to play with that, you can do that. I usually don't. I just do the saturation and everything. And then what I like to do is go into the filters. And here, like if we add like the vivid filter, like this is kind of like adding that specific look on top of what you just recorded. So you can go into vivid and just add a little bit of punch to your footage. Okay, hit done. And if we hit play, this is our footage now. So you have a full on clip edited right on your phone. Of course, like there is no right or wrong here, right? This is just your creativity, whatever suits you like however you want this video clip to look if you want it to have like a black and white look you could do that if you want to make it pop more you could do that but i personally think that this looks all right now this method with the final cut camera app is honestly amazing this is how i shot and edited all the footage that i've shown you with all these different reviews i've done so if you want to just practice this is great you can really make all your clips that you take with your iphone look so much better everything that i shoot now is in this format because when you get used to shooting this way what you're going to realize is if you try to open the regular camera app and just take a regular video with your iphone it's going to look horrible you're going to hate how over sharpened it is. And it's almost like your eyes are kind of used to that standard iPhone video. But once you get them used to this format and this kind of video, and then actually tweaking it to your liking, you're really going to be happy and there's no going back. So just play around with this practice. And before you know it, you're, you're going to be having amazing looking videos shot right on your phone. So now that I've showed you the free way, I want to show you a paid way. I bought this app, the Moment Pro Camera app. It's $9. And what I like about this is the fact that it allows you to bake in LUTs right into the footage. So for example, that beginning sequence that you saw when I wasn't taking the video from my camera, that is all just done with the Moment app. I have my like preset already dialed into the phone and this is the same one that I use for my camera's footage. So having that there and having it be baked right into your footage just makes everything so much easier. So we're going to do the exact same thing that you do with the Final Cut camera app. But here with the Moment Pro app, you actually have a little bit more control. You can change things like ISO or anything, but if you don't want to mess with any of that, you can simply just open the app, press record, have a specific look baked into your footage and you are good to go. So assuming that you're still sticking around and you've bought the app, if you open this app on the left hand side, again, you get all those different controls. So your frames per second, 4K, uh, shooting in log, right? And here, the important thing is going to be that if we go into settings, right, and you could have it save media directly to your camera roll. This is, again, something I like. So it doesn't get saved within the app if you don't want it to. It goes directly to your photo library, which is really cool. 
And again, if you have like an external storage device connected, then it gives you the option to uh, just save it there. Now we're going to skip the rest of this stuff. And again, we can have the grid on. And I didn't change any of this. What I want to show you is, uh, okay, video settings. So use Apple ProRes. And here's the important part. So video codec. Now, if you want the highest quality, then you're just going to select ProRes 422 HQ. Okay. But ProRes 422 Proxy, which I have selected right here, that is again, that HEVC format. So it's not going to take up a lot of space. And if you're doing everyday videos, I'm not going to repeat myself, but that's the format to choose. And that's it. That's the only thing I have changed out here. The other thing I want you to see is that in the top left here, you have LUT, right? So if we go here, I have mine, which is Q sauce, and I have it set to 80%. And with this app, what I like to do is just set my specific LUT at different intensities, depending on what I'm doing. And what's cool is that you'll be able to see on the screen what kind of change this is ma making to your footage. And what you can do is if you want to get LUTs that will make your footage look good, I'm going to link down below a couple of free places that you can go. You can download them and you can load them right into the app. So you'll be able to view what your footage is going to look like, adjust the intensity and you're good to go. Just press record. You don't have to mess with any of the settings. You don't have to worry about ISO and shutter speed and all of that. You just press record and let the iPhone do its thing. But instead of recording what the iPhone thinks you should be recording, you're recording in this format with your own look baked right into it. Now I've also mentioned the Blackmagic camera app in a lot of my videos, and I really love that app and that is free. But the only downside with that app I found is that you can't adjust the intensity of any LUT that you're putting in. So that's the only problem. But if you want to use that and just kind of use the LUT as a guide, then you can do that option as well. All right, so we've switched back to the iPhone 16 Pro front camera again. And to be honest, like this looks amazing. This is just like a makeshift setup that I've got going on today. I typically shoot in my studio downstairs, but I wanted to show the versatility that you have with an iPhone. I started this channel with an iPhone SE and to see how far the iPhone camera capabilities have come in these few years, it's really amazing. And if you have a pro iPhone, you should be taking advantage of this. Like if you can buy a thousand dollar phone, you can buy a $9 app that will help you just take your footage to another level. So I wanted to make this video, all this different footage that you've seen, it's all taken with either the Final Cut camera app, then edited with the Photos app like I showed you, or with the Moment Pro camera app with the look baked right into it and saved directly to my camera roll. So this is really amazing and I absolutely love it. And I really hope that this video can show you how you can take your camera's capabilities to another level using this format. And it doesn't have to be about having the right settings because a lot of these videos that you'll see on YouTube of this format, they're always aimed at, you know, professionals. And yes, I understand there's a time and place for that. And you can obviously use your iPhone for, you know, professional stuff. But what about the everyday user? That's what I wanted to show here is that as an everyday user, you can get really good footage out of your iPhone's camera, whether it's the front or the back. I hope this video helped. And if it did, please just give me a thumbs up. That's I would I would really appreciate that. That would really help me out. And like always, take care of yourself and I will see you in the next video.